We are currently witnessing one of the biggest changes in Valorant since release, and I want to talk about it. But first, let's see where it all began. It's May last year, and NRG are facing up against Ghost in the lead up for the Masters Copenhagen LAN. However, NRG are deciding to buy light armor instead of the normal heavy armor that every other team is going for, even when they had the money for it. It was NRG's analyst at the time, Mars Rover, that suggested it to the team, but this isn't the first time we've seen a strategy like this. It began in CS. It was a common CT side strategy to not buy the head armor because you're going up against AKs that are going one headshot you anyway. And it turns out that it actually translates pretty well to Valorant as well. So why would you buy less shields in Valorant? It comes down to these two factors. The money you save against the impact of the extra shields. Every round you don't buy heavy armor, you save 600 credits. This on paper could save you as much as 6,600 credits. And that could be one or even two extra buys and a half. Looking back at the NRG Ghost game on Breeze, they lost pretty heavily, but they only had to eco two times. However, I'm pretty sure if they bought heavy armor, they would have had to have eco double this at least. So you're probably thinking, okay, Sliggy, sure. They can buy more often, but is it really worth it if they can't convert these rounds? Well, I'm glad you asked, because at the moment, I think it is. A lot of teams at the moment are putting heavy priority on full buys. So that's Vandal, Phantom, and Operator. So there's less light buys, which is the one that I really think that the light armor struggles against. If we look at just the Vandal, the most popular gun at the moment, it doesn't change anything if you have heavy shields or light shields. You'll still die to the one headshot and you'll still die to the four body shots. It's a similar story with the Operator as well. You're not gonna survive a headshot or a body shot and you're still gonna survive a leg shot. It's just the difference between surviving on five HP or 30 HP. And lastly, we have the Phantom. This is where it does make a difference. That 140 headshot that you keep getting annoyed about when you hit. 140, 140, 140! Why do I play Phantom? One shot will take you down fully. It also isn't that effective against low binds. The cheaper guns are really good against light armor. One shot with a sheriff, judges, stingers, all of those guns become more effective. Also utilities that provide chip damage, so Sova Shock Dart, Raise Nades, become a lot more effective just because there's less HP to get rid of. Going back to the NRG Ghost game, they lost 13-6 and 13-5 in a pretty dominant fashion. The community was pretty brutal and things went quiet for a while. I know in Valorant, when you try stuff, it's a thin line between being either a genius or an idiot in the community's eyes. Looking back at the match, Ghost just looked like the better team. It didn't matter if they were buying heavy armor or light armor, the outcome would have been the same. It's GG for Ghost Gaming as they move up into the groups. But not everyone dismissed this. Some people saw the potential in the strat, and one of them was SLK. At Champions Istanbul, Fnatic hired SLK as an assistant coach. He still believed in the concept, and furthermore, thought that Fnatic could do it better than NRG, and this was a good testing ground for it. And whilst it showed some promise, it still felt like it needed more time. And perhaps RB can find more success with the ult, and he does. Sass has gotten one, two, RB with the both. There was a few rounds where they had so much money, they were still buying light armor and they could have bought heavy armor. The worst case we saw of this was against DRX. Boaster was so used to buying light armor that even when it went to overtime, he was still doing it. Bro, it's, like, it's lucky if Boaster remembers to buy, yeah. let alone for armor, so I'll let him off. Yeah, I didn't even realize. But it wasn't until lock-in that we saw this strategy at its full potential. With the extra time in the off season, they really refined the strat itself and got so used to it and had extra protocols on top of it. And just nine months after the NRG Ghost game, Fnatic had won their first ever major tournament by perfecting the Light Shield Bind. Their fifth global LAN, and finally, Boaster and Durka can put their hands on a trophy. Before I continue, I'm happy to say that I'm giving away one free coaching session, thanks to Kingston. If you want to enter, make sure you click the link below. The best teams in Valorant are very closely matched, so the little details make all the difference. The light armor strat itself, how much impact did it have on the loud Fnatic game? Let's look at the stats. With the light shield strategy, you should be ecoing less. Fnatic, they only ecoed 5.86% of their rounds, and loud, they ecoed 11.05% of their rounds. So it's an over 5% difference. This is pretty huge because it gave Fnatic more times to contest round itself, and it gave them more chances to build up their ult economy. Further proving this point, when we look at the rifles and how many rifles were bought per round, Fnatic had 0.43 more rifles per round than Loud did. Fnatic are using this strat a lot smarter than they were before. Certain rounds when they get over a set amount of money, like 4,000 credits, they will buy heavy armor once they feel confident in their own economy. Also, set strats, they will put certain people on heavy armor if they're first contact or if they're behind watching a flank and they feel like it's very important for that person to stay alive. 
There was one round that I want to look at in particular. It's round five and Icebox in the grand final. Fnatic have just had their money reset. Fnatic buy a little bit heavier into this round. They know next round they're gonna be buying light armor, so we see them with two rifles, one stinger, and heavy Uto over towards Sage. The main priority being the wall for the retake. Louds go for early B control with a Cascade and a Sky Flash beyond it. They see if anyone's close, the flash doesn't hit, and they know they can take the space. The Sky goes over towards the orb, picks it up, and that Sky all into this round. Once they got this space, they decide to send the dog to go clear yellow. Another Cascade comes out to block the vision from top and below sight, and they follow the dog all the way to yellow. They want to take the long range duel, so they start swinging out over towards Snowman. After they see no one, they also harbor wall to cut off the sight and the back of Snowman. Fnatic early rotate after hearing all of this sound. They have a multi-use Viper Smoke that is down to delay a lot of time. It's very good for the retake and gives Durka a lot of angles on the top of sight. Durka gets a kill and the plant goes down. Boaster clears the plant spot inside his smoke to make sure the Chronicle can stay alive, wall, and start to defuse. Loud do great to spam the wall and kill Chronicle defusing. However, Durka puts down a smoke and it gives himself a really good angle top of sight and he manages to trade this back and do some more damage over towards Less. The smoke also blocks vision and gives Boaster a chance to cross over to yellow and kill off the low HP player. This brings it into a 4v2 and even popping the sky ult isn't enough to help Loud win this round. With the constant pressure of the spike and Durka being on top of the site like an absolute turret, it's just too much for the Lao players to win this round. This round was one of the three rounds that Fnatic got on their defense. This helped mount their comeback and we all know what happened from there. I'm pushing in B. Oh, I'm tripped. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> After watching lock-in, a lot of teams have started to adopt this strategy. We got 6 out of 10 in EMEA, 3 out of 10 in Americas, and 3 out of 10 in the Pacific League also. The stats themselves tell a similar story. We looked into the EMEA matches so far, and teams that are using this strat are ecoing around 5% less. In the future, I'm expecting more teams to adopt this strategy, but I'm also expecting a lot of teams to start using these other kind of guns that are going to work well against it potentially an increase in the Judge, the Stinger, the Spectre, maybe even the Bucky. Liquid were doing the Heart Shield, but yeah. you can't do that against yes. Odin, you're yes. dead. I'm gonna bet that a lot of other teams are gonna start picking up this Odin. A lot of people are expecting Riot to try and change this. I actually think they should increase the price of Light Shield. It costs so little for so much. But do we really need to change anything? Is Heavy Armor just a luxury item that we should be buying once our money's good? Have we just been playing Valorant wrong this whole time? Let me know in the comments what you think.